every story starts with a blank page. This one is called The Skies Are Mine and by Jay Wilburn. So let's see if we can make something out of this. <coughs> uh, since the dragon attacks had begun again, commerce, especially in the air, but also by land and sea had been crippled. Okay, since the dragon attacks have begun, again, commerce, especially in the air, but also by land and sea, I need a comma here, had been crippled. Now only the knights in their airships dared to enter the skies above the terrified land. All right. They guarded let me do a new paragraph here. They guarded the borders. But trying to repel attacks from all directions had spread the royal fleet thin. To the north, <clears throat> let's say the northwest, to the northwest above the highest peaks of the Grey Mountains. That's not a very original name, is it? Above the highest peaks of the Grey Mountains, and I must use the wrong two. There's no uh, typo that embarrasses me more than using the wrong homophone. It makes me feel dumb, so I gotta always find those. To the northwest above the highest peaks of the Grey Mountains, only the trio of Law, Baz, and Roe. To the northwest above the highest peaks of the Grey Mountains, only the trio of Law, Baz, and Roe guarded these treacherous air treacherous winds. The hope was that they could handle it. The hope was that they could handle it. That no dragons would risk those deadly downdrafts themselves Those deadly drown dra downdrafts themselves or that if they did their three best knights could handle it As Sir Lawrence, as Sir Lawrence Sixsmith, on the deck of the tarpon below six wind bags. That's a lot of introduction. Let's see if this sentence makes sense. As Sir Lawrence Sixsmith on the deck of his, on the deck of the tarpan, below six windbags, saw the creature undulating through 
the violent winds over the peaks toward them. He certainly had his doubts. He flipped the levers, I say control levers. In a steampunk story, you always get very vague about the uh, actual mechanics of everything that runs on steam. He flipped the control levers and opened the valves, allowing the boiler to heat for the battle and the maneuvers to come. He leaned toward the mouthpiece of the what would you call this? of the speaker horn, I guess, before he could say anything. Before he could say anything, Sir Rowan, Rowena, Sir Rowena Moody, from the wheel of her ship, the Charity Arrow. Let's just say Charity Arrow. We don't need the D in there. From the wheel of her ship, Charity Arrow amplified. Let's change that to the amplified horn. Amp the fire horn amplified her voice to him we see it law I'm going high like we planned even as the nose of her ship turned skyward even as the nose of her ship turned sky okay say so even as she spoke even as she spoke the nose of her ship turned skyward and she started to climb through the thin air. To Law's other side. Um, Sir Basil Sir Basil Dolphin took the javelin into a controlled dive. Baz must not have realized his lips were close enough to the mouthpiece to pitch his voice to the other ships. He cursed the wild winds 
trying to pull him off course. And he mumbled. Brimstone. Law wrinkled his brow. He thought he must have misheard Baz's rantings. But he aimed the spyglass across the mountains anyway. Black and gray scales fell in and out of focus as the beast closed the distance carefully. Not carefully, quickly. Like a dragon's flying through them carefully. It's a very, um, very tedious dragon. Always flies carefully. Black and gray scales fell in and out of focus as the beast closed the distance quickly. All right. Finally, Law caught the dragon in frame as it soared upward again. On its course, its belly was a little lighter, and the rest of its body and its massive leathery wings but only by degrees it was all sharp angles I'll say severe angles it was all severe angles and sharp claws and horns extra um, horns let's say spikes extra spikes along its sides and back made it look like the monster was covered in dark thorns. Law caught sight of the dragon's eyes for the briefest moment. Pale white, flecked with gray, and a rare, jagged, wait, jagged slash of reptilian, reptilian black for its eye that thin center centered darkness staring back at law 
looked like a lightning bolt in negative. He hadn't misheard Baz at all. He wished <clears throat> to the heavens that he had. This was the Navroy. This ancient beast had been called Brimstone as far back as law tracked his ancestors and beyond. If it was coming for the kingdom over these treacherous mountains, against all the instincts of its species, then this creature was wise and devious. It flew right toward three of them because it knew that they were in as much danger as he was, as it was. And it knew they stood the least chance of repelling him. Law armed the weapon. Law set aside the spyglass and armed the weapons for the fight of his life. If he died today, no doubt he would be a legend, but that seemed small consolation. Say a poor second place prize, indeed. All right, let's get this battle going. I think we've built it up enough. The final few lunges of the monster through the air seemed... Okay, let me spell monster correctly. The final few lunges of the monster through the air seemed to um, close the distance in a fraction of the time it took in the fraction in a fraction of the time it took to cross the rest of the range law what now let's go here the air wavered in front of Brimstone's face. In front of Brimstone's 
open jaws. It made him appear to be surfacing from below rough waters. Law knew what it meant and deployed the forward shield instead of opening fire. Say opening up with the weapons. If I keep saying fire, it's going to be confusing because we're talking about a dragon. Instead of opening with his own attack, let's say. All right, good enough. Flame like burning liquid ignited from pouches and ducts within the reptile's cheeks. As the flame met the outside air, it spread and brightened, spilling over the double rows of sharp teeth in the dragon's wide maw. Fire washed out the world around Law and his ship. He felt as though he had locked himself within a furnace. That wasn't far from the truth. The material of the deployed shield say the fabric. Let's like make this more specific. The thick fabric of the deployed shield held briefly, but then ignited and split open in several places. The dragon roared and the fire cut off just as the shield just as his shield twirled Away in burning ribbons under his keel. The heat had lifted his ship sharply, and the new wave of cold dropped him again. The dragon had veered under him 
and now he risked crashing down on its thorny back racing by below law world control wheels and stressed the bell of his boilers in order to steer himself away from the danger, from the immediate danger. The flap, okay, let's start a new paragraph here. The flap of Brimstone's starboard wing shook the hull like a quake. Law held on as his deck tilted nearly sideways in his evasive maneuver. All right, I'm always going to have to check spelling on maneuver. I'm never going to spell that right the first time. All right. His evasive maneuver. The dragon's tail, more deadly than any flail ever forged by men, swung toward him. He released air from the bags and um, and spiked into a downdraft on purpose. Um, the sharp points of two spikes, two tail spikes, raked his hull. And tore away heat resistant tiles. Okay. Sharp points of two tail spikes raked his hull and tore away heat resistant tiles. It was better than shattering upon them. As Law spun down in a death spiral, like being trapped in a whirlpool, say a violent whirlpool, violent whirlpool, he calmly refilled the bags and turned the wheels slowly. Trying to come out of the dive 
to abrupt would split his ship apart. Turning at the wrong angle would slam him into the sheer mountainside. He eased himself around as turbulence shook the world into a meaningless blur. If the old dragon, if the old dragon decided to press the attack on him, he would be dead before he saw Brimstone coming. The vibrations of rough winds remained. Okay, let me fix one typo. The vibrations of rough winds remained. But he could see again as he leveled out far below the dragon's wake. He was lower than Baz's ship now, looking up at its ruddy belly that meant he was way out of formation. The dragon circled on row and the circled on row as the beast now had her and charity arrow isolated either the dragon was wiser in strategy and the three of them combined or they were just fools fighting a monster like this under these conditions. Row lit up the beast's side with a barrage of explosive harpoons. They exploded. Let's say they they burst bright off the creature's hard side scales. She might as well have been firing on the mountain itself for all the good it would do. But then the last 
several projectiles all hit at the connection of the dragon's wing on that side. The beast roared again like before. It veered hard away from the attack and downward. Downward as it folded its abused wing into its side. That's, okay, hold on. That's exactly what the monster did when it stopped its fire attack on Law's ship. That was no accident. Row. That was no accident. Roe had attacked the first time and saved Law by a hair's width. He noted that he owed her a drink if they survived this. The dragon twisted in the air and flapped and flapped both wings out from its body and hard to stabilize itself again. The creature found itself positioned between the two ships, between the three ships, in a crossfire with law being the low ship this time. Brimstone might be wiser than law, but it appeared Roe had them all beat in cleverness. All right. Brimstone might be wiser than Law, but it appeared Roe had them all beat in cleverness. Baz took up the fight. Striking the other wing with wire ties. The heavy weights, say chain ties, instead of wire ties, and chain ties. The heavy weights Oh, thank you for the thank you for the cheer. I appreciate it, Aunt Poggers. Glad you're here. It means a lot. Alright, the heavy the heavy weights. spun through the air as the chains 
wrapped that leathery wing like something thin and weak. The dragon roared again in what had to be rage and frustration. Okay. Dragon roared again in what had to be rage and frustration. It spit a thin cord of fire out into the windy sky. The fire twisted in all sorts of interesting shapes. The creature folded its wings and dropped again, escaping the ties in the process. Now it was level. All right, let's say now it was level with law. And outside the crossfire, let's say below, below the new crossfire point. It turned its dark lightning bolt eyes on law and the air wavered in front of its ugly face. Law finally joined the fight and unloaded his forward weapons into its open mouth. The great lizard the great lizard choked and twisted away. Law had missed its mouth, but may have scratched its eye. Okay. More of the arsenal from the higher two ships fell on the dragon's back. It whipped its head from side to side. and flapped hard to drive itself straight upward. Okay. Say, if it had a strategy at that point, the ancient dragon was simply trying 
to clear itself of all the irritation. The chemicals it left unignited hold on I think I can spell this right the chemicals it left unignited in the air behind smelled like the acidic mix the squires used for cleaning iron. Okay. Brimstone spun. Okay, let's spell his name right. Brimstone spun upward and soared between the other two ships. It turned, it turned in the high air and sprayed a wide breath of fire down on Roe and Baz. Law cursed. Um, Fix all this. Sprayed. There we go. All right. Law cursed and powered up his boilers. Okay, hold on now. Powered up his boilers to get himself up where the fight was. Roe and Baz scrambled. Two of her balloons burst and then disintegrated. Baz had a number of blackened had a number of blackened ropes snap and he struggled to get the ship stabilized as he spun downward through the air. Law soared up between them both. Okay, Law soared up between them both. He glanced both ways. Row swung from a rope from one side of her ship to the other as she repositioned her surviving balloons. Say airbags. Airbags. She had a broad, toothy smile across her face. Law wanted to read that as fear, but it sure looked 
like she was having fun. Baz was a different story. His ship, say, yeah, his ship threatened to roll over from the missing ropes. If it did, it would dump him out to the ground. As he struggled to save his ship and himself, as he struggled to save his ship and himself, his clothing, hair, and okay, let's let's put this up. As he struggled to save his ship, his clothing was scorched, hair singed, and his skin blistered from fresh burns. Law raced upward through I say past and away from them to face the dragon alone. To give them time to regroup. The beast hold on, I'll make a new paragraph here. The beast tried to wash law in fire as well, but he flew right at its belly. The fire missed him. And he exploded a few loaded harpoons against those lighter scales. The dragon tried to flap backward. But law guided, say law matched, law matched it, matched the beast, and stayed nosed up to its underside. The dragon roared. and tried to claw the ship away. This was the risk of this foolhardy. This was the risk of this foolhardy play. Law aimed up and peppered the underside of the dragon's jaws, dragon's jaw. The beast hissed and snapped. Its claws missed, its claws missed him, and it flapped, claws missed him, and it 
flapped backward again. So law stayed with it. He had no eyes on his friends, but he knew time was what they needed, and as much as he could buy them. Law caught sight of something else dark and closing behind him. He thought it was either Row or Baz. Returning to help, but the shape was too big. He turned back into the fight and um, harassed the lizard some more to keep its claws off him a little while longer. All right. <clears throat> Rose voice carried up from below. Rose's voice carried up from below. She was amplifying something to him. He hoped her ship and what remained of her arsenal would be close behind. Behind you, she cried. All he could think was a second dragon. They could barely hold their own with the first one. As brimstone twisted away and dove downward a little to get away from law, he took the chance to swing out and wide to keep the second beast from burning him up from behind. What he saw as he brought the tarpon around scared him more than a pair of dragons. He recognized it right away, but had to get over a few seconds of denial 
in order to process it. It was the Dreadmore. Lord Shrine's Flying Fortress. As Brimstone flew out over the mountains again. Law thought no, let's have him say it. <clears throat> Law said, very good. Turn your wrath on that villain for a little while. But, okay. But then, <clears throat> I'm gonna turn on a fan real quick, I'm sorry. <clears throat> no, that's a light. All right. Keep having to remind myself it's summertime. <clears throat> Turn your wrath on that villain a little while. <coughs> but then Brimstone swung wide behind okay let me see if I can spell some words right swung wide behind the flying fortress and shrines crew fired a volley of shots in the direction of the trio of knights in the direction of the trio of knights and the kingdom laws jaw unhinged in shock the shots were okay, let's say the ships. Ships were far out of range. And the barrage fell harmless through the mountain passes below. Still, it gave the dragon a moment to recover. All right. Uh, brimstone or board shrine alone were formidable enemies but together they were worse than any nightmare law had ever experienced in his natural life. He made what he could of the lull as well. He made what he could of the lull as well. He reloaded and used 
the spyglass to try to locate his compatriots. Baz was flying very low. The belly of his ship must have been brushing the treetops. Down there, it looked as if the night and his trusty airship had both suffered terrible blows. He could not find Row or Charity Arrow at all. Um, Law cranked up the boilers until steam leaked loud, hot, and shrill. Loud, hot, and shrill from the seams. This was no way to treat a ship. This was no way to treat a ship that you planned to fly for years. But it might be a thing you would do if you only planned to live one more day. He unleashed all that power. and skipped across the tops of the wind currents wind currents at surprising speed by the time shrine and his crew got a few shots off. By the time by the time Shrine and his crew got a few shots off, um, Law was bobbing up and down on the uneven wind in too jagged of a pattern for them to aim and hit. All right. The Dreadmore turned hard over the mountains to try to avoid Law's reckless headlong strike. A ship that size, a ship, a ship the size of shrines was stable 
and hard to take down. But it was slow to move. As it turned, Law caught sight of the great dragon perched on the back of the Dreadmoor. where it rested. There was no doubt now. Brimstone and Lord Shrine had formed a dark alliance. Law himself was going to be one of the first victims of that partnership. When they spoke of his sacrifice, it would be his failure when they spoke of his sacrifice, it would be his failure and not his bravery that would be remembered in the dark days to come. Say, comma, he now knew. As Brimstone launched and puffed out its cheeks to ignite a new and final fire for law. Charity Arrow soared up from below the enemy. Ro Let's keep this the same paragraph. She keeps saving him. He should really uh, carry his own weight in the story, I think. But uh, looks like she's going to be the hero. Ro turned her vessel hard as if going into a new dive. All right. Before the dragon, before the dragon could complete its first flap, Row unloaded every armament she had left every armament she had left into hold on, into its, its exposed wing dragon roared and closed its eyes tight as it twisted to the side away from the pain. In its blind fall It crashed into the Dreadmoor.
and ruptured its hull. Law watched. No, he doesn't need to watch it. Just say it happened. Crewman fell screaming toward the mountains below. The ship wobbled through the rest of its turn. And it flew away from the kingdom as it vented steam and lost altitude a bit at a time. Law felt a dark hope that shrine say Lord Shrine Lord Shrine would not make it home the dread not the dread more was tough though and was hard to bring down even damaged <clears throat> um, okay we're in the home stretch here brimstone rolled over and turned its snout northward as well. In its retreat, however, in its retreat, however, its spiked tail tore off the port side of Rose ship she was already in a dive and now she careened for the ground Law emptied his air and dove steeper than her. As Roe clung to her deck and braced herself impact the tarpoon um, piloted by law hit the damaged side of her ship first deck boards peeled away into the rushing air. She met eyes with him as they dove together. He waved her over 
like she was late for an appointment. Row charged across the splintering ship. From the splintering ship, the vessels already started to pull away from each other as Law refilled his refilled his airbags. She let the final distance, seeing nothing but the distant ground, I'll say the distant rocky ground, under her feet. She rolled onto his deck as the ship, as his ship, shook through a violent turn. Row turned long enough to watch her ship, her beloved ship, break apart on the mountainside. Then she started working the controls to help Law navigate these impossible winds and passes two of his ropes snapped they continued to adjust as they hooked low around one of the mountains. They swung out into open plain, open, say they swung out over foothills. In, they swung out over foothills in the kingdom's territory again. Law scan. Let's do a new paragraph here. Law scanned the clear skies and spotted the dark shapes. of a dragon and a villain retreating side by side. This war was far from over, but the kingdom had been defended today. He surrendered his controls to Roe and leaned over the side, searching the forest below, the forests below, and we'll say to the south. 
for Baz's ship. Anything, she asked. He said, hold steady and go slow. Get us out over the trees. Those crazy stripes on his balloon should be easy enough to spot. If the dragon didn't scorch it black, oh, let me spell some of these words right. If the dragon didn't scorch his ship black, then maybe. Law did not look away from the ground. He wasn't, say he was burned, but not completely. Bro did not respond, but held steady. After long minutes, Law shouted, there. The ship and its deflated airbags had hung up in the canopy below. He had covered several miles in his controlled crash. About a quarter mile farther south a column of gray smoke gray smoke spired into the air Baz let's do this a new paragraph Baz was still standing and waving. He looked hurt the last time Law saw him, but apparently he wasn't gone yet. Law lifted a hand but before, let me put a comma there, but before he could speak, Rose said, I see it. I'm descending now. There's room to land. bug on my screen. There's room to land and then we can get word to the rest of the fleet and the king as well. 
outlaw side. It does not feel like a victory, does it? Sometimes living, I say surviving, sometimes surviving has to be victory enough. I will not get over the loss of my ship, though. Okay. All right, sometimes surviving has to be victory enough. I will not get all over the loss of my ship, though, as Law watched that thin column of signal smoke rise from the ground. He wondered if there would be more fires and smoke in the kingdom in the near future. <laughs>